Uh, Nick, you pause your video. Okay. Hey guys, we're playing a video. We're playing. Uh, not playing, God. We're watching Six Creepy and Chilling True Christmas Stories, Second Christmas Break Ins, and Narrow Escapes. But yeah. Um. The thing is that the reason I'm doing this is because it's creepy and it's almost Christmas kind of ish. November, November, then it's December, yeah, but like Thanksgiving and Christmas kind of like. Christmas related, it's kind of related there, right? Right, it's kind of like cousins, so not really brothers, but I guess it's like work too. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let's get, let's watch this. Number six. This happened a few years ago when I was still living in my parents' house. It was a few days before Christmas and my parents had gone out to visit family for the day. I decided to stay home, relax, and make the most of having the house to myself. And thankfully, my parents were pretty cool about me skipping the visit, as we would get chance to see our family again after Christmas. I settled in for the day, lit the fire in the living room, and chose a few movies and settled down to watch the first one. After the movie finished, I decided to go and make a snack, and it was then, from the kitchen window, that I noticed something strange. There was an old, battered looking van parked opposite my house, and I could see some men in the front seat just staring up at my house. I'm a pretty paranoid person, so alarm bells started to go off in my head straight away. I left the kitchen to go and find the phone so I could call for help if needed. It was just as I picked up the phone that I heard the back gate rattle. I realized that the men were probably trying to break into the house, and I froze, completely. In concept, it is easy to think that you would quickly call the police, but I was so scared, I don't think I even blinked for a while. There were two back doors to this house. One led into the kitchen, and the other was a sliding door into the dining room. It was when I heard loud bangs against the kitchen door that I knew I had to do something. I ran into the downstairs bathroom, locked the door, and phoned triple nine. There are men trying to break into my house. I'm home alone. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <sighs> why do you have two back doors to your house? And why would you use them? I would never, I never use my back door. I use my front door. Please don't back door. I, I, well, I mean by that, like, I would just board it up or something. I would put a fucking, I would put a desk, a chair, and like 50. And if someone's going to be the back door and then break it open, there you go. You know what's going on now, so you escape the before they even reach to you. Boom. And scared, please, help. I gave my address, and the operator told me a unit had been dispatched and would be there soon. I crouched down behind the door, shaking and trying not to cry. The noise from outside, it stopped. I ventured out of the bathroom when I heard police sirens and let the officers in. The van had gone, and the back door had not been kicked in. I guess the deadbolt on the door held them at bay, and they must have run. They had a good attempt though. The door looked damaged, and had to be replaced. Apparently, there had been a number of burglaries in the area recently, and these guys were probably on the lookout for people's Christmas shopping. I guess my house looked empty because there were no cars in the driveway. I don't know what they would have done if they had successfully got in and found me there and I don't want to think too much about it. The guys were never caught, and I never saw the van in the area again, which means they're still out there. But I'll never forget how scary that experience was, and I'll never, ever take any chances with home security. Number five. My name is Lance, and this story takes place in 1998. Mate, that would break your feet. On Christmas Day. Let me give a quick backstory. My aunt was pregnant at the time and wasn't due until after the New Year's. She had two kids already and they took about 41 weeks each. If you don't know, normal pregnancies are about 40 weeks. Also, my mum had a boyfriend at the time, Jim, who was into cage fighting. He wasn't that big, but he had been doing martial arts since he was around my age, which was a fair amount of time. 
My auntie, who wasn't due to have her baby for another two weeks, she went into labour in the morning of Christmas Eve. So, since we had a tiny apartment, we went to their big suburban house so my mum could watch my two other cousins. My mum's boyfriend was spending the holidays with us and tagged along. We brought all of our presents and we packed everything over the next few days and we headed over. When we got there, my grandma was there. She could have watched the kids herself, but we had already planned to go over on Christmas Day and my grandma was a bit of a drinker. We got everything hauled into the home and I went to the backyard to play with my cousins. They were only two and three at the time, so it wasn't that exciting. We played various games on a yellow roof car and we also played cops and robbers for some time. We ended up going to bed early that night, exhausted. So one time me and my brother were being stupid, we had white, no, white white, 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 white. Yeah. So we used to draw guns on the shape of our guns that we had, and oh, then yeah. we act like we were playing Nazi zombies. Yeah, we were, we were like six, we yeah. were seven. We didn't get in trouble for it. Like we were stupid, we were stupid. We didn't know Jack. Like if we if we see a pencil, guess what, we'll, like, we'll draw with the erase. Yeah, we don't even after all of our playing. Still no news on the arrival of the baby yet though. At around midnight, I woke up to my mum and grandma talking happily. The arrival of my new cousin had come, which was awesome. They were across the hall in my aunt and uncle's room and I went in. I didn't see Jim anywhere, so I figured he may have gone to the bathroom or the kitchen or something. He usually didn't turn on lights out of respect for people sleeping. My cousin had been born exactly at midnight on Christmas Day, making her the best Christmas present for our family. As my mum and grandma calmed down after all the excitement, I was ushered back into the bedroom. I was smiling, not wanting to wait to tell my cousins about their new sister. And at that moment, I heard a loud bang from the front of the house. I heard Jim yell to my mum to call 911, as sounds from the front room indicated he was fighting with someone. I ran to the front of the house to see what was going on, hearing a thud as I got closer, followed by silence, when I saw a man step in front of me. It was Jim, and he looked pissed. I saw blood dripping from his hand, but it was coming from higher up on his arm. He moved me inside and went to the bathroom. I looked in the living room to see a man lying face down in the doorway. He was dressed in all black and had a backpack on, and he wasn't moving. When the police arrived, they questioned Jim as the paramedics arrived to look him over. The guy in the doorway, he still hadn't moved. The paramedics removed the mask from the guy and cut his shirt off to try and resuscitate him. Jim said something to one of the officers, and he told the paramedics that the guy's neck, it snapped. It turns out that Jim had slammed the guy on his head after he attempted to follow him in from getting some extra presents from the car. The loud bang we heard was a gunshot that had barely hit Jim in the arm. The paramedics looked me over after an officer noticed that I had blood on me as well, but it wasn't mine. Jim was taken to hospital and he was returned later that day. Turns out two things happened that night. My cousin was born and Christmas was saved. Jim was also found innocent of unintentional manslaughter after the courts decided that it was all self-defense. Number 4 so, it started maybe three years ago. I'm now 17, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. For some background, my... Let me pause real quick. Okay, so, I don't want to talk to you about, about this, guys. Uh, if you guys want me to do more kind of react things with my brother, he's not really seeing it, he's just hearing it, which is kind of, which is kind of the point. You don't really get to see what's happening, you just kind of hear it. Well, actually, we watch like, scary this animation. is what I see right now. I, th I see a freaking guy in a Santa suit freaking beating the crap, crap out of me. Crap you out said of crack? <laughs> you said crack? My name is Josh, and my friends Nick and Dan were the same age as me, which was about 14 at the time. We had been building a treehouse by a small creek we all lived by, and we planned to bring a generator and such to make a cool gaming room. This night, we had all decided to go on our weekly night walk to go check out our treehouse. It was Christmas Day, 
and we had all decided that spending time opening another lame set of clothes was not what we wanted to do, so we went off to the treehouse. We all brought flashlights along, and mine, being the best of the three, was put in front of all of us. I live in California, so it wasn't as cold as like Boston or something, but it was still pretty damn cold, and pitch black, so we kept smack- Oh yeah. It's not cold here. It's probably cold soon. It snowed that one day. Yeah, it's cold first. like right next to me. There's no one Molly's burning up to death. Oh, you actually know a cat shield with this right now? She's laying down and watching it. Ow. Pop it. Watch it. Listen, very close to you. Come on. Say that to you. But she is right here. Backing into tree branches that the flashlight couldn't reach. As we neared the treehouse, I kept on feeling like we were being watched or something. I asked Nick and Dan if they felt it too, to which they replied yes. At some point during the night, I guess I'm pausing them to tell a story. So. I remember when I was little, and I used to be there, when you always used to sleep on the couch in there. Mm -hmm. I always used to be alone, and then I couldn't go to sleep. Because you felt lonely, and like scared. Uh, uh, <sighs> okay, what? I was sitting there watching like ghost adventures or something. That's why I never slept in here. And then I always felt like you sometimes come to sleep, but then you wouldn't sleep the most time, but. I always lay down and I always feel like someone's watching me. Okay? Why I lay, there's a huge space and someone just stand behind me while I'm laying down. Oh yeah. And I hate that. I was just sitting there and I'm like That's what I feel like there's eyes just standing there. Actually, that's why you I always glance behind me. Now, I know that's the wrong thing to do, but it's a, it's like a reaction. But that's that's why I sleep in your no. You, you told me about this though. Yeah, but if I want to start sleeping, you're, you're forced to sit in your ear. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Half of it was we like heard a human-like scream, which ended up scaring the shit out of us, but it was just the geese that our neighbors had in their backyard. As we got closer to the tree, we started to notice that there were footprints in the soft mud, but we brushed it off as one of our earlier visits. For one, that's another story. <laughs> I love story still, right? Huh? I love story still, right? So, we had a time when we were little, and we played outside, and we saw this really, really deep footprints. Oh, yeah. It was just in a snow Mm hmm. Oh, And we got so freaking scared because, like, it was in our yard, it was straight past our yard, and no one really let it go in our yard. <laughs> Did you not have something to say? Yeah, you would go first to issue, yeah. So, we were sitting there following the footprints. They led into our playhouse. Oh, that's a scary And we opened our playhouse door. Apparently, if someone has stole two fire guns, uh, two of our balls, like, you know, yeah. And then one of your big balls. Everyone. What big? The the middle green ball we found. Oh, yeah, a couple years. Oh yeah, it's gone. That guy's so slower. So we started following the footprints. Actually, it was like a beep, beep, them all that. So, I'll be sitting here, and I mean, I was just meeting, meeting him before the phone, for friends, and then he went back home because he got scared. Like, I, I kept, did not feel that. Like, I so, was, I kept walking like, how and walking. I and then someone else's yard. So, I walked through the yard, and I thought, like, okay, okay, there's no one here. Did the footprints stop? Like, you didn't tell me this yet. 
You didn't tell me this part. Uh, I only have that Facebook, I was scared to tell you. And then I saw a person with a Santa hat. Um, Actually, it was November. Hiding. It was November. So? What, stereotypes plus coming up? No. So I'm wearing a Santa hat. Um, under this guy's porch I saw and I took off running and I made it back to my house and took parents and back to God. That's what they did. And they and that and that's true short you probably don't believe you. I can't remember saw this. We kept on going. This is something that I regret to this very day. Oh, and another piece of background. Our hideout was in the middle of nowhere, so there was no way anyone could have really been here to expect us. Finally, after trudging through darkness for some time, we saw the old black oak tree in the middle of the clearing, and we stopped at the base. My fingers were freezing cold, and so were Nick's. Dan was smart enough to bring gloves though, so we sent him up the tree to do a routine check. The entire time, I just felt really wrong. I can't explain it, but it was like shit was about to go down or something. When Dan got to the final step, he peeked into the fort and just froze and muttered, What the fuck? To which he then said, Oh shit! And jumped off the tree and landed on us. I started swearing and asking him what the hell was wrong. And just as he was about to answer, this half-naked old man jumped out and started screaming at the top of his lungs like a fucking bench. Scaring the shit out of myself and Nick, it prompted us to all run. As we crashed through the woods and tried to get back onto the main road, we heard this fucking creeper start to chase us, and we started booking it through the forest. At one point, I remember tripping and then getting up pretty sure I had broken my finger or something. Finally, we saw the main road and each split off to go to our houses, screaming like pansies. The old guy ended up chasing me, since I was still ridiculously fat and out of shape at the time, making me slower than the others. When I saw the hill that my house was on top of, I ran like a marathon runner and sprinted up, where I finally had to stop for some breath. When I looked behind me, the old guy was at the base of the hill, just looking at me. He then just grinned like he was utterly and truly insane, and when I pointed my light at him, he ended up just running back into the woods. I didn't end up telling anyone because of the trouble I might get into. And we all ended up never going into those woods ever again. It's been three years now, and I still get chills when I have to pass them on my bike. As far as I know, that crazy old guy is still out there somewhere in the woods. Well, he's still in your treehouse. Number three. Demon. Demon. When I was young, Demon. my parents really Demon. encouraged Demon. my brother and I to believe in Santa Claus. It was partly because of our Christian upbringing, and partly that they wanted us to have that magical excitement that surrounds the Christmas holiday for as long as possible. We would run downstairs to the fireplace on Christmas morning and gleefully tear into the single present left for each of us by Santa, in addition to the gifts from family and friends beneath the tree. The year I stopped believing in Santa Claus was a confusing one, and I didn't understand the full ramifications of what had happened for several years afterward. I was still pretty young about seven or eight, but fairly old to still be believing in a jolly fat man in a red suit who squeezes down a chimney. Television holiday specials and annual trips to the mall or local church for photos with Kris Kringle were enough to reinforce what my parents had told me. So, t'was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except for two rambunctious youngsters who were absolutely set on waiting up for Santa, and their two exasperated parents. My brother and I had gotten into the cookie tins, so we were about ten kinds of wire, and we weren't going to bed until we heard reindeer on the roof. It was going on at about 11.30 at night, very late for us in those days, when bedtime was around 8pm. Our parents were on the verge of bribing us with just about anything to get us out of their hair, when we saw a figure in a red and white suit walk past the living room window. My little brother, all of four years at the time, yelled, Santa! And both of us rushed to the front door. We couldn't understand why my mum suddenly grabbed us and hustled us upstairs, or why dad was quickly locking the door and rushing for the phone while our Siberian husky stood in the entryway and growled. 
We whined and complained as we were tucked into bed in our parents' room, oddly enough. But mum insisted that we'd been very good and waited up for Santa, and now that he was here, it was time for us to go to sleep. It took some doing on her part, but she convinced us that if Santa knew that we were all still up, we might not get any presents, so we had better go to sleep on the double. So, we burrowed under the covers and squeezed our eyes shut, like all kids pretending to be asleep. In mere minutes, the sugar crash hit, and we fell asleep, for real. Just before I drifted off though, I heard my dad come into the room and say something like, Jerry's here. This was confusing to me, as our neighbour Jerry was a police officer, and I couldn't figure out what the reason he could have been visiting on Christmas for. But I was too sleepy to puzzle it out, and I didn't hear anything more before visions of sugar plums pulled me under. In the morning, our expected gifts from Santa were on the hearth, and we ripped into our pile of gifts with frenzy. It was a good Christmas that year. Dad had won some money in the state lottery, and it had resulted in some much needed renovations to our house, as well as a vacation to Disney World, and a whole lot of very nice presents for the family. He had been in a lottery pool with some friends at his job, and they all received a share of the winnings. It was actually on the local news and everything. It didn't dawn on me until much later that neither of my parents looked like they had slept. They were both drinking coffee, which was highly unusual, and they smiled at our antics and thankful hugs, but otherwise, they weren't as energetic as most mornings. For months, I chalked it up to having to wrangle my brother and I the night before. A few months later, a classmate of mine brought in a newspaper article for current events at the school. For those who've never had to sit through it, this involves students bringing in stories from periodicals and fumbling through a two minute presentation of the salient points. I usually halfway slept through this part of the day, but not this time. The article was about a man who'd attempted to break into several houses in the week leading up to Christmas holidays. He'd been arrested on Christmas Eve while trying to break into an occupied home dressed as Santa, and his trial date had just been set for later in the year. As sad as it sounds, that moment was the moment I stopped believing in Santa Claus. I'd previously thought that the red suit was something of a trademark, and surely only Santa himself could wear it. But heck, if any old joker could put on that suit, even one who robbed the houses, then surely, to my young mind, it meant there was no Santa. The pieces didn't fall into place until several years later, when I brought the incident of the very late Christmas Eve up to my mother in conversation. She looked shaken for a minute, but then told me I was probably old enough to know what had actually happened. The man from the newspaper article had been tracking down the people from Dad's lottery pool. He knew they'd all won money, and so would probably have nice new purchases and possibly cash, or even expensive holiday gifts squirreled away in their homes. He'd broken into a couple of my dad's co-workers' houses and made off with jewellery and electronics, but he'd never been there when anyone was home. Also, another scary element to this story is that the things he'd stolen, they were sold off for drug money. On Christmas Eve, he'd gotten hopped up on something or other and got into his head to dress up as Santa and to try and hit one more house. Ours. He'd showed up close to midnight, probably thinking we'd all be in bed, and he tried to open the front door. Fortunately, my dad managed to throw the deadbolt in time and called our neighbour, who was a police officer and was on duty at the time. His name was Jerry and he came over right away. Jerry put the guy in handcuffs right there on the front porch and called for backup. The would-be Santa bandit was hauled away while my brother and I slept in our parents' bed upstairs. I don't know why any thief in his right mind would have tried to enter a house where there were clearly lights on and people awake, especially children. The drugs probably had something to do with it, though I never found out what it was he was on or whether he was carrying any weapons. All I know is that I'm very grateful for my parents being such quick thinkers, otherwise that year Christmas may have turned out very differently. Well, that's it, guys, and that was a good, pretty good, right? Before the, before the video even started, guess what? I was scared. The bone. I was. It wasn't that scary, but that's some good scariness to it. I, was, I liked it, and yeah. I was planning to look up something else, but I might save it for another video. Yeah, another video. Do you have to do that? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, 
We should, we should call a video like creepy Santa stories like, or creepy Christmas stories. Christmas stories. Creepy Christmas stories. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that.